God cannot lie, because God is perfectly moral, and lying is immoral. But lying is logically possible. This is an action which I can do, but which God cannot do. So, am I more omnipotent than God? There seems to be some kind of limit on God's power, which even a lowly human being like me is capable of transcending. So, how can God actually be omnipotent? There are typically two responses to this observation, which seek to prove that God still can be all-powerful, even with limitations like this. Response number one, God's omnipotence is limited by his nature. He can only do things that are consistent with his nature. My answer to this is simply to observe that, by this definition, I am omnipotent. I can do anything that's consistent with my nature. In fact, this is true of anything that can do anything. My calculator can only do a certain set of mathematical operations. That's just its nature. So, is my calculator omnipotent? This is clearly not what we mean by the word omnipotent. If your power is limited by your nature, that just means that your power is limited. All you've done is restate this fact in different terms. Saying that God's power is limited by his nature is just a fancy way of restating the fact that God just cannot do some things. It's a complete non-answer. So the idea that God is omnipotent, but he's limited by his nature, is incoherent. Response number two, God's omnipotence is limited by his will. He can do anything, he just doesn't want to. God can lie, but he won't. It's kind of like having a loaded gun that you never end up using. I can do that, but I don't wanna. First, if God's perfect will is a product of his perfect nature, then this just puts the first problem into different terms. God is incapable, not of doing certain things, but of desiring those things. Why is he incapable of desiring them? Well, because that's his nature. And we're right back to where we started. A being who is limited by his nature cannot coherently be called omnipotent, any more than a calculator can be omnipotent. However, I also think that appealing to God's will to defend his omnipotence relies on a subtle redefinition of the word can, as in, I can do something, or something can happen. When we say that something can happen, or that a person can do something, what I think we mean is that there is a non-zero chance of it actually happening. The possible world in which this event takes place might be the actual world. This is not so with God. For example, if I brought you out into the woods, and I showed you an old, undetonated nuclear bomb that I'd found, and I told you that this nuclear bomb is, at this very moment, capable of destroying the entire city, only to reveal that there is a 0% chance of that happening because the uranium inside has been removed, you would correctly reply that, no, actually it cannot destroy the entire city, it does not have that power. To say that this bomb can destroy the city is false. That's not what we mean by the word can. At best, you might say that this bomb could destroy the city if it were different. People don't realize that these cannons are very sensitive, and the slightest jolt could set them off. Of course, for safety reasons, we don't keep the cannon loaded. It's just common sense. But bombs and cannons are inanimate objects. What about intelligent agents? Well, let's take me for example. Right now, I am capable of picking up a gun and massacring a crowd of people at Disneyland. This is something that is within my power to do, I have hands, I have access to guns, even if I think the probability of me actually doing it is incredibly low. But it is only because there is a non-zero chance of me gunning down a crowd of people at Disneyland that we all agree this is something I technically can do. It is only if there is no chance of me doing it that it makes sense to say I cannot do this. And indeed, this is the situation God finds himself in. So, in summary, the idea that God can lie, but there is no possibility of him lying, does not seem to be a coherent idea, because this is not what we mean when we use words like can, or capable, or potential. What does it mean to say that a nuclear bomb can destroy the city if there's a 0% chance of it ever happening? What does it mean to say that God can lie if his actions must follow his perfect moral will? 
Sure, if the bomb still had fuel, and if God was different, then these things can happen. But in reality, they can't. So unless we change what we mean by the word can, then it is not coherent to say that God can do anything, and that God is therefore omnipotent. The only way for God's will-bound omnipotence to make sense is if you grant the idea that God has a non-zero probability of doing anything and everything, even evil things. However, this would be incompatible with the idea that God is perfect, which is why, in my experience, very few Christians are willing to use this otherwise valid escape hatch. For these reasons, it seems to me that omnipotence is an impossible characteristic for a being like God to have. If God's power is limited by his perfect nature, then literally everything is omnipotent, including me, and the claim becomes a meaningless non-answer. And if his power is limited by his perfect will, then it's not accurate to say that he can do things such as lying. And if his will is perfect because his nature is perfect, then we're right back to problem number one. Omnipotence simply cannot exist in a being who, for example, cannot lie on account of his moral perfection. Thus, any being which is said to have these two features cannot exist.